News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience. Red Apple Fireworks. News 46 is also brought to you by Safi of Las Vegas. At Safi, we're more than a foster care and adoption agency. We're working to build stronger families in our communities. Visit our website at safi.org. Tonight on News 46, we speak to the mother of the eight-year-old drowning victim. And a senior study presentation at the Pahrump Town Board meeting. And the fourth annual Independence Day Parade is just around the corner. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, June 30th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, in an exclusive with the mother of an eight-year-old who died as a result of drowning in a pool on Saturday, we speak to Julie Saragusa, who is in need of help with little Marie's funeral expenses after she lost her husband and father of her seven children last year. I'm hanging in there minute by minute. I know we've all heard about your daughter, and uh, tell me about her, Marie. How old was she? She was eight years old, a beautiful little girl, she had a heart of gold, and, and she touched many lives. Many people loved her. Many people were praying for her through all of this, all over the place, from Tehachapi, California, to Prump, Nevada, to Utah, all over the place. Beautiful people, and God bless them all. Thank you for praying for my little girl. Thank you. It meant a lot, and it still means a lot to all of us. And thank you. God bless all of you. And um, let's go back to what happened on Sunday. I believe it was Sunday. Saturday. No, Saturday. Um, there was a church event, a, a group that we went to through the church, the Trinity Church. Um, it was for people that have gone had tragedies and things in their life, and we had this group. And um, we went to the... You went to a, through a tragedy recently with, as well. Yeah, I lost my husband in August, August 31st. I, my husband I was married to over 20 years had a heart attack and died. And that was very unexpected. And um, it's been never been the same ever since. And Because uh, you're the mother of how many children? Seven children. I have two in the Army that are going over to Afghanistan and the five younger ones that are home with me. And Marie is my only daughter. And then I have the six sons. And uh, what happened on Saturday? Saturday was today like normal every other day. She um, wanted to go real bad swimming. She really wanted to come along. I was initially going to bring a friend, you know, and have her go with me somewhere else at the Nugget Kids Adventure or something later and just, you know, have her big brother babysit her. But she wanted to come with mom. And, you know, when you're a mom, sometimes you just do anything to make them happy. And um, so I said, okay, come with me. She was all jazz. She loved the swimming pools, whatever, you know, because we always just had the little ones that you barely can have enough room for your feet, you know, and sit in, you know. And I was just, when I got there, it was such a cool looking pool. It reminded me of something like at Magic Mountain we've gone to before that had the water slide thing. It was the coolest pool. They had a really nice time. These are beautiful people. All the people there, God bless them all. They're really good people. And um, it was just a nice day until this happened. And um, Marie couldn't swim, but you did have a floaty that you had for her. I was going to bring it, and I forgot it on the bed. I had so much on my mind. And I got home, and it was right there on the bed. 
and I just had so much on my mind, it's my fault, and I feel so bad, and if I could go back in time to that day and live it over. What happened um, up to the event? Just, I was making some plates of food for the kids to go, and um, she was just in there saying she was gonna go back out to the pool, and, and in my mind, it looked fine. It looked like, like I said, like the ones that match them out with the water slides go down, and it looked safe. And then I saw people standing in the other water with, you know, their stomach showing, and I, it didn't, in my mind, didn't seem deep. It was was she in the pool earlier that day? We weren't there that long. It started at 3.30, and we had just, we weren't really there that long. I talked to a few people, got the plates of food. I was going to get ready to go. I wasn't going to be there very long. I usually you don't stay at a place very long because I got a lot of kids. You always got to go home to your babies and stuff. So you guys decided not to go swimming at that point? No, she was. She went back out. I was going to get the, the plates of food. Like I said, in my head, it, it looked okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there was people around. And um, just everything seemed to be okay I got the plates of food I start asking has anybody seen Maria I don't see her and I'm looking through I don't see her maybe she's walking around what a fully tragic story this is and we really appreciate her coming up here and talking to us I know it could not have been easy and uh, the pictures that you saw were actually the most recent that have been taken of Marie. So to help the Saragusa family, contact Lee Funeral Home at 727-1888. The funeral service will be held Tuesday at the Latter-day Saints Church on Wilson. The viewing will be at 10 a.m. with the funeral to follow at noon. And to see the extended version of this interview, go to kpvm.tv or kpvm's YouTube site. We will have part two with Julie Saragusa on tomorrow night's broadcast. And folks, the United States Air Force officials announced today that search and rescue teams have found conclusive evidence. The pilot of an F-16C Fighting Falcon, which crashed at approximately 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, June 28th, did not survive. At the time of the accident, the single-seat F-16 based at Nellis Air Force Base was participating in a combat training mission within military operating airspace managed by the Nevada Test and Training Range. It crashed on Bureau of Land Management property approximately 20 miles west of Caliente, Nevada. Based on evidence recovered from the crash site and after extensive aerial and ground search efforts, they have concluded that the pilot did not eject from the aircraft prior to impact. The Air Force has also stated that our thoughts and prayers are with the pilot's in immediate family, Air Force family, and friends during this difficult time. Okay, thank you for that. According to a recent study, oh, there's a fly in the studio. <laughs> According to a recent study presented at the town board, the over age 50 population for the state of Nevada is 894,147, which equals 29% of the state. The Portrait of Nevada Senior Study gives us a data, data that can be used to better serve our citizens. Uh, my name is Pam Gallion. Um, I am the director of the Cannon Survey Center at UNLV. And um, in a cooperation, cooperative project with the Cooperative Extension and the Cannon Center, um, we conducted the third iteration of this uh, Portrait of Nevada's Seniors. And um, in the, uh, the, the study actually started in 2006. And, uh, and in, in that ensuing 2006, 8, and 10, my staff has talked to in excess of 6,000 Nevadans over the age of 50 to try to quantify um, what Nevada's aging looks like. Over 50 population consists of approximately 894,147 people. So the over 50 population represents 29% of our population. Average income, 15% of Nevadans over the age of 50 have a household income of less than 15,000 a year. That's so $1,250 a month. Now remember, this is 15% of almost, almost 900,000 people. So um, that's a lot of people. And w when you look at this, this $1,250 monthly income and you see what the cost of living is in Nevada, and we've got a medium figure on that, you, you will see that 
um, there are some, some uh, what I call pockets of disparity that, that do exist among our, our 50 and older population. 28% of Nevadans over the age of 50 have a household income of less than $25,000 a year, which means they're living on approximately $1,666 a month. Again, that is, um, as we'll see in a later slide, that is not enough to cover your three basic needs of uh, food, utilities, and, and, um, um, and housing. On, on the other end, we have 28%, an equal amount that said that they have a household income in excess of 75000 a year. Rent, mortgage is $1,200, utilities 320 and food 395 which means just for those three basics, you need $1,918 a month to survive in Nevada. Total annual for food, utilities, and shelter is, is a little over 23,000. And we already know we've got a large portion of, of people, 15%, that are living on less than 15,000. Well, if we add those numbers up, it means that we have approximately a quarter of a million or 250,318 Nevadans over the age of 50 who cannot afford or who can barely get by uh, with those three basics, food, utilities, and shelter. That means they don't have the money that they need for insurance, for transportation, for home maintenance, or, or medical. We even have a small subset that they're actually living hungry in Nevada. That's about um, 35,000 Nevadans who are living hungry. That number was up by 5,000 from the, the, uh, the 2008 to the 2010 data collection. Well, while nearly half or 49 percent rate their health excellent or very good, 22 percent of the 50-plus population in Nevada reports their health as only fair or poor. And again, if we put that into real numbers, um, that's 196,712 people who self-report as fair or poor. Um, 8% of, of the 50-plus population have no health insurance, so that's about 71,000 over age over 50 with no health insurance. This is one of the areas where there's going to be a huge impact, and this number has remained constant in this study from the, the 2006, 8, and 10 um, iter uh, iterations of the survey. And we'll have more local news right after the break. Please keep it here. Welcome back to News 46. Al Balakwi, who is Community Service Business Development Manager, spoke to us about a survey that will be conducted in September to help with future planning. Well, the community assessment, I'm, I'm very much in support of community assessment, and, and, and there's been a lot of people that have questioned it because they say, oh, we don't need another study, we don't need another assessment, and yes, we do. Uh, and, and the reason we do is because times have changed. Have we had them in the past? Absolutely. Have we had a lot in the past? Absolutely. But the past is the past and now is now. And what the community assessment is, it's been endorsed by the state. The Nevada Commission for Economic Development has endorsed the community assessment. And basically what they come in, and they do a fabulous job, they actually have volunteers that come in and spend about a week of their time here, and they're trained in individuals to come and they ask basically four questions. They ask, what do you like best about your community? What don't you like? What would you change or alter? And where would you like to see us in the next few years? Those aren't the exact questions, but you got the idea. And everyone gets their input. And they'll be look, looking to do that sometime in September. And they go from the schools to the businesses, and they'll be holding focus groups, and then they come back and let the town know so we know where we are and where we're going. What's so great about this is, is, is that it gives the community the opportunity to express how they feel and where they want to go. This is not a complaint session. That's not what this is about. You know what I mean? You could write your letter and send that in. This is about where we're going to move forward. And that's what's so great about the community assessment. And even so, I'm, I'm so proud, I don't know if proud's a word, or I'm glad that the county has been willing to fund half of that assessment yeah. for the town of Pahrump. Yeah, I was going to say, where are the funds coming from for this? Well, the town of Pahrump, is the, the funds are coming from professional services, the general fund, mm -hmm. which is only $7,500. And the town, the county has gone ahead and matched $7,500 for the town to sort out where it wants to go. And now people have their opportunity to give their input. And we use this data? Then they'll use that data to go ahead and put together where the plan is and what we want to attract and where we want to go. And, and maybe you know items that we want to look at a little bit more absolutely uh, you know you know what's so important is to get the community buy-in mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean, you know, to, to go ahead and get assurance. You know, pretty much us in, in the in, at the town office have a good idea where the town wants, but every once in a while we have to do a gut check and find out, yes, we are right. This is where we want to go forward. You see, the problem is, is, is that we have a strong, silent majority in Pahrump. You have a few people that come out and are very vocal, and they say what they want, but they represent usually less than one half of one percent. And this group goes out and actually talks to the people on their doorsteps. Are we expecting them to come they, door to door? They, they will go ahead. They're going to do. They're going to do something at the school district. They're going to go ahead and go to the social organizations. They'll they'll meet with the social organizations. You know, we're talking about the Kiwanis. We're talking about the Lions. We're talking about the uh, Seroptimists. We'll, they'll ask them all to come to a meeting. Get all their members to give input. They get with with the chamber, with the business community, they'll ask them to go to the Rotary. They're going to try to reach the greatest, the most broadest sector in the community and get feedback from them to understand how they feel, where they want to go, and, and how we're going to get there. And now here's Doug Berta from Red Apple Fireworks with your firework safety tip of the day. From Red Apple Fireworks here with your Red Apple Fireworks safety tip of the day. Today, the tip is to never experiment with fireworks or attempt to build your own fireworks. Also, never deconstruct fireworks that you purchased. Also, only buy fireworks from reputable retailers such as Red Apple Fireworks and make sure that they haven't been tampered with before you detonate them. That includes making sure that all the packaging is still intact, that there's only one fuse, and that one fuse hasn't been altered in any way. I'm Doug from Red Apple Fireworks with your Red Apple Fireworks safety tip. The Liberty Festival will be held for three days this weekend at Petrick Park to honor Independence Day. Saturday night will also be the first night of movies in the park. This Saturday, the movie will be shown at Petrick Park. The remaining five films will be held weekly on Saturday night at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park beginning at dusk. Yeah, we, we're kind of gearing the Liberty Fest this year towards more towards families, you know, more wholesome events like tug of war and balloon toss and pie eating contest and a bake off. So we want, we want families to be able to bring their kids out and enjoy the festivities and it's free. The 4th of July falls on a Monday, so this is a three-day event at Petrick Park. Tell me a little bit more details. I know that we have some live entertainment as well, and the Prump Got Talent contest. Yeah, what we're trying to do this year is uh, open up a Prump Got Talent contest to try to get people of all ages to come out and, uh, you know, show what they've got. There you go. And, of course, we're going to have fireworks on the Monday on 4th of July. Yes, the fireworks which are provided by the town will uh, go off approximately 9 p.m. And a show like no other, like we always have, that just brings in the people. Oh, yeah, the fireworks are definitely the draw. I mean, you get people coming from Vegas and surrounding communities just to see our fireworks display. Well, we're hoping to pack the park, but we're also going to have vendor booths there, right? Yeah, that's correct. We're going to have uh, food vendors and then general vendors, and then we're also setting up for the kids. We're going to have some bounce houses, uh, Sli water slides, we're going to have the fire department there. Uh, we're also going to have a petting zoo, pony rides, uh, little trains for the kids to ride on, face painters. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, we're real excited. Like I said, it's, it's more for the family this year, you know, because I know times are tough and we want the families to be able to, to come out and do something as a family, not just get on a, uh, you know, a ride and ride around where they're you know, not together. So this way the parents can be involved with the kids in the tug of war and the three-legged race and the balloon toss. It's going to be so much fun. So tell me, for the Prump Scott Talent Contest, do you need to sign up ahead of time, and do you need to sign up for any of the games? Yeah, what we would like is to call the, call the Chamber of Commerce, which the number is 727-5800, and uh, ask for Nancy, and go ahead and call and say, hey, we've got three kids of these ages, and we would like to participate in the tug of war, the balloon toss, and then that way we can get the age groups together so that it's uh, an appropriate event. If people want the whole schedule of all the events so that they can see what they'd like to sign up for, how can they do that? They, once again, they can contact Nancy at the chamber and she can give them a, uh, a breakdown of what times the events are. If they called it to, to uh, sign up their kids for, say, the tug of war, she has a, a sign-up sheet for ages and what the time is, so she'll be able to tell them then. Wonderful. And then for the vendor booths, um, how can they sign up for those? Yeah, same thing with the vendor booths. They just need to contact the chamber, once again, 727 5800 ask for Nancy um, the food vendor booths I believe are full but we are still looking for uh, other vendors to, to uh, sell their wares and we really want to uh, you know like to promote some local businesses the fourth annual Independence Day parade will be held at the Calvada Eye on Monday July 4th beginning at 9 a.m. 
Well, it's the 4th of July coming up and it's a Independence Parade again. Yeah, Independence Day Parade will uh, step off at 9 o'clock, but before that, come early. At 7 o'clock, the VFW will start serving a pancake breakfast. Uh, it's very, very inexpensive. Uh, all the money raised goes to the VFW for that, and we're selling T-shirts. Also, half the money will go to the Nathan Adelson Building Fund, and half the money to the VFW. They've underwritten the parade the last four years. Do you know how many entrants we have? Well, we usually have about 30 to 40, uh, and a lot of them come in at the last minute. So all of you out there who haven't uh, uh, sent in your, it's not really an application, just send me, a, send me an email at butchbrasketyahoo.com. And we'll use that as your entry form. Put in uh, what you know, what you're driving, walking, how you're going to do it, whether it's a truck or a float or a car, uh, and uh, how many people. And we'll use that. If you can, we'd like you to make a donation to the VFW, but it's not mandatory. Wonderful. I know we've been doing this for four years. Yeah, this is the fourth year. Butch and I started this about four years ago when the first uh, Freedom Festival was first nixed. Uh, and then uh, there was all the talk about nothing happening on Independence Day. So when we started this, we called it the Independence Day Parade, and we make sure that it's on the 4th of July. Exactly. Every year it's been uh, getting bigger and bigger, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And uh, we're looking for a good crowd this year. Uh, some I've seen a few new names pop up and look forward to it. I'll have my own vehicle. I'll have a fire truck in there for a float this year that I picked up for a parade vehicle. So... Come on down, have have some fun, relax, enjoy the Calvada Eye here, and it's getting better looking every day, and enjoy the day. And here's your entertainment this week with Zach Fuentes. I'm Zach Fuentes with your entertainment this week. The Vans Warped Tour will be held in Las Vegas today at the Plaza starting at 11 a.m. and lasting into the evening. Some of the bands performing will be Asking Alexandria, The Devil Wears Prada, Paramore, and as many as 60 other bands on various stages. The 44-show tour will travel throughout the United States and Canada. The Black Entertainment Television Awards, or BET Awards, were held Sunday. Chris Brown walked away with four awards, including Best Male Rhythm and Blues Artist, the first award given that night. Wiz Khalifa received the Best New Artist Award. His single, Black and Yellow, recently reached the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 list. The Young Stars Award was tied between Jaden and Willow Smith, the children of actors Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. The Lifetime Achievement Award was given to singer, songwriter, and actress Patti LaBelle, whose successful career has lasted over 50 years. A sale for a social network is expected to be completed today. And no, it's not Facebook or Twitter, but MySpace, which was at one time the number one social networking site. The website was once valued at $1 billion and will be sold for an estimated $20 million to $30 million. 500 employees are expected to be laid off when the purchase is complete, which is one half of the company's employees. The future plans of the website has yet to be revealed. Rascal Flatts will be going on tour to promote their latest album, which was released last year. The group came up with a concept called Flats Fest. The festival will be held outside each of the tour stops venues and will include singing contests, photo booths, carnival games, and miniature golf. The Electric Daisy Carnival was held this weekend in Las Vegas. The event welcomed thousands upon thousands of dance music enthusiasts. The event's Los Angeles-based organizer said that it was a rousing success. Approximately only 330 arrests and medical emergencies took place. That is a relatively low number compared to the enormous number of attendees. Fans will get to see a glimpse into the personal life of a Hollywood legend. Christie's is preparing a worldwide tour and auction of some of Elizabeth Taylor's most prized personal possessions. The auction house is assembling a museum quality collection of Taylor's jewelry, fashion accessories, decorative arts and memorabilia, and will display it on a three month international tour beginning in September. I'm Zach Fuentes and that was your entertainment this week. And now our Facebook question of the day. Today's question is, with another date of possible federal shutdown looming, what is your opinion on our current reoccurring federal debt ceiling crisis? Should it be raised and how, or who should be cut from, the rec from receiving benefits, i.e. disabled, seniors, welfare, military, etc.? Well, here's what some of you had to say. Spencer said, first of all, with if there is a government shutdown, then they can't cause any more damage. Second, there should be a straight cut across the board. No picking on this group or that group. A flat percentage for everybody. Everybody thinks they need, more, they need money more than the next person or that their reasons are superior. But 
all reasons may be valid. But everybody needs to sacrifice right now, and a straight percentage makes it fair to everyone. And keep all tax breaks. The rich may have the money, but they're also the ones that put it back into the economy. The debt ceiling is too high. If I overdraw my checking account, I can't just spend more money or even qualify for loans. The government should be no different and should not be above the law. Repeal Obamacare. Billy says, start at the top. Rich, richer, and billionaires. Cut their tax cuts. They're, they're, <laughs> they solve the problem. And get rid of all those stupid programs. Saving the whatever, leave the seniors and little people alone, and keep the money here, not overseas. Feed us first. Everything starts first with the family. Then branch out if there's anything left. And Deidre says, I always have a debt ceiling worry. Won't go into the why of that, but if you own a small business, you know what I mean. Would love to be able to shut down for a day to regroup now and then, but that defeats the purpose of trying to help pay for my elected official's health insurance. That should bring in the comments. All right. Very heated subject. Yes, it is. All right, folks, make sure to stay tuned to our Facebook page for our question of the day, which hopefully will be every day. And also stay tuned right here because we got your seven-day forecast right after the break. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vail with your weather today. Sunny day out there, high 97 degrees, winds out of the southwest at about 13 miles per hour. Our pressure holding steady on the barometer, 29.96. UV index is 9, very high. Sunrise was at 5.30 a.m. and our record high was 115 degrees back in 1994. Looking at tonight, it's going to be clear out there, a low 72 degrees. Winds out of the north at about 9 miles per hour. Sunset will be at 8.06 p.m. and our record low 60 degrees in 1970. Tomorrow's looking bright and sunny with a high of 102. Winds out of the, uh, the south-southwest at about 8 miles per hour and our overnight low will be a 74. The UV index for tomorrow is 9, very high. Sunrise will be at 5.30 a.m. Seven day forecast Saturday looking at the weekend 22 mile per hour gusts 106 for the high 80 for the low Sunday cloudy skies expected a high of 23 uh, I'm sorry a high of 106 with a low of six, uh, 83 with 23 mile per hour gusts Monday 4th of July 103 for the high 82 for the overnight low cloudy skies and the wind luckily dying down for us probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 mile per hour gusts. Tuesday, looking at a 30% chance of rain to clear all that gunpowder out of the air. 21 mile per hour gusts, a high of 105, a low of 81. Wednesday, yet another 30% chance of rain. Gusts of 24 miles per hour, a high of 105, and a low of 82. Thursday, looking at a 20% chance of rain. So as you can kind of tell, next week, someday, we're going to get some rain. Gusts up to 23 miles per hour, a high of 109 degrees, and a low of 79. And the worst weather in the nation today, Chalk Pyramids, Kansas, for just being plain hot. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Perron. Good night.